Well, good day again, Rick Casagrande from Eureka Gun Company, introducing again our what we think is a wonderful rifle in the Eureka Stockade. It's just a quick update, just letting you know where we're at, what we've done, what we haven't done, and why we haven't done it at this stage. So that's what today's all about. So we hope with respect to the 223 here that's in front of us, the standard Eureka Stockade, uh, we are waiting currently on a couple of parts that we sent back that we weren't happy with, namely the bolt carrier. Some of the drilling didn't actually go straight and the bolt had some issues. So we've sent them back. We, whilst they would work, it was sort of only just, we decided that no, they've got to be perfect as far as we're concerned before we let them out. So we're waiting on those parts to come back. And hence the reason why we haven't done the torture test either is because we want to torture test the parts as we get them from our supplier rather than the parts we've made in-house that we know are perfect and work well. We want to make sure that everything is perfect, every part, and when you get it, there is no need to be concerned about the correctness or the ability of the firearm whatsoever. So we are taking, I guess, a little bit longer than we would have liked, however, uh, better do it now than try and fix something later, which uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate. An issue that raised its head at the gun show in Melbourne was people not being able to reach the lever comfortably, having to move their hand uh, too far around uh, to uh, be able to release the action to close it. So we are including a second lever, which is longer than the one that uh, was displayed at the show. You will have the option to fit that if the one that is on there doesn't suit. We do recommend that a gunsmith do that because you're working in the bowels of the action. If you know exactly what you're doing, that's fine, but I wouldn't want to be pulling it apart and doing it myself the first time. So our expectation now is it will depend the timing on the, the remake of the bolt carrier and the bolts. We will know that on Friday. I'm still hoping that we will be firing some of these rifles out before the end of the year. We'll certainly be torture testing before the end of the year. We'll keep you in touch with that. I'm sure you all would rather see that before we send a rifle out to you because we're really keen to, to get into it as well. So that's where our timing is at the moment. So bear with us and you can be assured that when you do get your Eureka Stockade, it's going to be worth having. Well, in front of us here is uh, the Eureka Stockade 9mm. The, the firearm we've uh, decided to go with um, is obviously a little bit shorter and you've seen it before. However, just letting you know that we've now got um, our regular suppliers with all parts uh, correct. It's functioning really, really well. We are really keen to get this out there, particularly for the IPSC shooters. Currently, we're just waiting on the final pricing and the supply of barrels. And of course, the magazine adapters that have got to go into the current mag well. So once we get the nine mil is, is a goer, I can see that both firearms might be available close to the same time as each other. But to be more realistic, I'd say probably the new year, the uh, nine mil will be ready to ship out. With the adapters, it's important, we have mentioned before, they will be available for the 1911 single stack Colt style magazine, the Glock model 17 and 34 magazines, and also the CZ style magazines. So to what we have also been doing that you perhaps don't know about, is we have now got a working 300 blackout available for our Eureka Stockade. And this is our, our first prototype. And, but what it also shows is what a full upper uh, conversion would look like if that was the preference to otherwise ordering internal parts to change your caliber. This is obviously what's the easiest because all it needs is the, the three mounting screws for the lower and you've got your, your working firearm without having to do any, any sort of gunsmithing because the hammer 
and the bolt, everything lines up. Everything is the same as the 223. And in fact, the nine mil trigger group, nothing changes. So that's the beauty there. And in our next video, we'll talk about the cost of a, of a full upper and, uh, and also the parts, if you want to just change parts, because the 223 and the 300 blackout pretty much run the same system except for the gas. And I'll show you that in a moment, but the, the barrel's locked in. It uses the same bolt carrier. The nine mil, unfortunately, has a totally different bolt carrier. So there are more changes to the nine mil than there are to say the 300 blackout. So to give you an idea of what's uh, different there in the gas, I'll just move this. Obviously we've got a big heavy barrel in there, which won't be the case. Um, for the, uh, the final product. So here's the gas hole uh, for the port on the 223. And under here is where the gas port hole is for the 300 blackout. Now, obviously it's all got to do with the amount of volume of gas that's produced to drive the bulk carrier into the rear wood position. But this one is so close that the action is just so short doesn't need much. So the only thing missing from here is the spring, which will eventually retain all this together, which we haven't put in there just purely to be able to demonstrate easily the full travel that this action will work at. So the reality is it's only this short. And it's, so it, it's, it's quite simple. It's neat, works really, really well. And to give you an idea, the standard uh, 223 springs operate the, the firearm in the 300 blackout with the high velocity ammunition. The low velocity ammunition will operate with one spring and works quite well. So whichever way one decides to use the firearm, you can use both of those with the action working. However, what we probably would say is that somebody who's using low velocity ammunition may not necessarily want the action opening and closing and having that sound on top. So we are going to supply the gas block with two screws. It's not an adjustable gas system. It'll be two screws, one that it's open and another one that it's closed. So in the event that you want to use it as a straight pull, so you're not making a lot of noise with low velocity ammunition. So that's the benefit and why we are doing that. The 300 blackout will initially be offering in a 16 inch barrel. 12 inch barrel is obviously very possible given the shortness of the stroke of the gas. So what can happen in terms then of four ends is you'll see here where the gas block through these holes, which you won't see because the gas block will be anodized black. However, it gives us the ability to cut the forend a lot shorter, similar to the nine mil. So we don't have such a long forend as we do on the 223, which is really there because of the, the length of the gas block away from the breech. And, but on this occasion, due to the shortness, we will be able to keep this much shorter, similar to the nine mil. So that's it for this episode, just keeping you up to date. If there's anything else you want to know, please let us know by giving us, sending us a quick email or comment, and we'll try and get to it as quickly as we can. I'm sweating on, I know you're sweating on the torture tests as we are, and as soon as we can bring it to you, we certainly will. As soon as we're ready to go, you'll be the first to know.